Welcome back, one and all. We're doing the Deer Pie GUI Currency Converter app. This is part two. I want to get to the part where hopefully we get a chance to uh, create our app. This is how it's going to look for now. I'll let maybe in a later tutorial or maybe on your own you can learn how to style it. But what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to walk you through the code that creates your information here where you can choose the amount. You can add or subtract the amount here. And um, we have a from and a to and a button to convert. The from uh, will have a list of these, uh, some of these uh, currencies. And uh, there is a default setting here and a default setting here. So I could just literally, when I open this app, click convert. Uh, and then once we're done with the whole thing, we'll actually be able to get an up-to-date conversion from one system to another. And I'll walk you through that. Today, I want to just focus on what elements make this up and how we got to this stage here. If there's enough time, I'll also uh, set everything up so that we can make a connection to the API. Right now, none of this work we did here that I have done uh, is going to the API except for as a reference. So um, I've already coded ahead. So I figured for time's sake, I wanna just walk you through what's going on here. But let me tell you what I did. I took just the demo and I created a folder of all these demo apps that I was testing out, different ideas. This is not part of the project. It's just there for me to try some things out. And uh, as I was trying out, I learned how to basically create all of your setups of what you see on that window. Um, I just literally took the first run and I saved it as app.py and then I just made some changes. Okay, the first change here, import model, this is an import statement um, importing the model file and as you may recall in a model view controller, the model has to do with the data. So anything that pulls up data for the app is going to be run using model. Okay, so we uh, import that, we're going to use that in a bit. Uh, this is the same as before, the only thing I changed uh, was the title changed it to currency converter, don't recall if it was in the last video or not, set the width, set the height. Um, and then with the window, we also changed the label here. And we, I decided to match the width and the height of the window to the viewport so they would just fit perfectly inside. Um, we added text, the first item is just text. By the way, you just add items, they're just gonna line up from top to bottom. At this point, we're not really doing anything with layouts. And then we just put the text in there. Okay, and then um, if we want to get, I, I realize if we're going to be converting currency, we want a floating point number. So I decided to add input float. We gave it a label of amount. Let's go ahead and run this thing so you can kind of see what we're talking about as I talk about the code. Because uh, I think it's helpful. So you can see here, add text right here, welcome to the currency converter. There it says right there, add input float. Uh, default value is 1.0. I decided, you know what, in a currency, you know, let's start with one. All right. Um, and then because it's uh, input float, you can add or subtract. Setting the width, uh, basically will set the width from uh, the widget to the plus sign, I believe. I don't know about amount. That might be included in the width as well. I didn't measure it and I didn't read the docs. Um, then we added a combo. Now, the combo is going to be interesting because let me just replace this to show you something. Um, the, when you add a combo, the first thing you need is a Python list. So I'm just going to put uh, this and then that. Okay. And the default value is just going to be this. And then I'll explain in a moment. Okay, so in a combo, and let's just bring this over here so you can see the full screen. Uh, the first thing you do is the data that goes in a combo needs to be in the form of a Python list, which is brackets and then strings with commas in between. And they do have to be strings, so keep that in mind, um, which is fine because when we're going to be connecting to the Internet uh, to an API. It's going to return strings anyway, so that's not going to be an issue. And then you can set the default value, what you want it to show when you first run it. And then we have a label from, and then the width of 250. I adjusted that when I saw what the currencies were because they do take up a lot of space. But let's go ahead and run this again. I'm gonna close this. And just so you can see um, the way the list works. Notice you have, now it says this is the default. If I click it, you have this and that. So just, just so you know, that is a uh, list. Okay, and then we set the default value of this. And then we gave a label of from, and you get the rest. Okay, I'm gonna close this, and we're gonna undo and go back. Um, 
there was a lot of code that created what you see here and uh, I want to go over that in detail because it's going to take some uh, thinking. Um, and then notice there is the model that we imported and it appears anywhere where we're dealing with data that we want to show and then we just end with a button that says convert and that's it the rest of this is exactly what the first run had that's all the same all right so now I want to go into and this is where it gets really interesting is what did I do with the model okay in order to figure out the model here I'll just show you the code and I'm gonna walk you through in just a moment what all this code does Okay, I'm going to use Python to manage some stuff. And this might get a little complex, so you just kind of want to follow along to the best that you can. I went to the API and I did the standard API call, which gets you the latest currencies. It's just a list of currencies. And um, this is what's called a JSON object, JavaScript object notation. Here it is, all formatted, all pretty. This formatting is only, you can only see this kind of formatting because I installed a, um, a, a Google add-on that let you see the, lets you see the uh, JSON objects all formatted like you see here. I clearly decided, now there's a couple things we can do. You could, and eventually we're going to do this, we could connect to the API and grab this and format it. However, that is a lot of items in the list. We're talking over 200 items. That's just a little too much, okay? So what I did is I just picked out a handful of currencies and I matched literally a copy and paste from that site. So you have Canadian dollars, Swiss francs, Chinese, Danish, Dogecoin. I thought I'd throw it in there just for fun. Uh, pound sterling, Indian, Japanese, South Korea, Mexico, Philippines, Thai, United States. And I didn't even catch that I pasted this, but why not? Okay, so we have a lot of these different, um, different currency codes. And this is actually the way it's going to map out. This is a dictionary. And in a dictionary in Python, you uh, open your dictionary data with a curly bracket. And I call this the currency code map because it's a mapping of code to its uh, normal statement. Okay, so we have CAD for Canadian dollars, CHF. So when we do the API call, we're going to have to send it a code to get our, convert, our currency conversions. Okay. So that all being said, this now, um, one other thing I want to point out is that while we're talking about here, if you are not familiar with Python dictionaries, I recommend you stop this video right now and you go do a little search for Python dictionaries. I find W3Schools is a good one. And then you can take a look at it and it shows you how to access items, how to change items, how to add, remove, loop, copy. This is going to be invaluable for you if you are not used to dictionaries. Um, dictionaries are also known as hash maps uh, or maps in, uh, I think it's maps, I think I used the wrong word. Anyways, in other, in other programming languages. But we're in Python, so, um, and this is a JavaScript object um, is what this is. Okay, that being said, uh, let's go back here. Now, I wanted, uh, I, this, I, I, I don't even know if I can explain how I came to do all of this, but I wanted one that would get the currencies. I want to get currency from code and get the currency string. Now, to get currencies, um, I decided I would get a, a currency string, um, set it to an empty string, and then I was going to loop through the keys in the currency code map. And then, um, okay, so, so what I'm doing here is this get currencies. Let's see where it shows up. Model.currencies, right? We just have a list of currencies. But if you look down here, at the bottom is currencies equals get currencies. Okay, so we're just creating a variable that calls the function that gets the currencies. And you might be going, well, why not just do currency whatever? Well, eventually I'm going to replace this with the full list from the online API. And so I might as well have a function that does this, that loops through it. There's probably a better way to do it, but this is the way I thought of, is create an empty string and loop through all the codes in the currency code map keys. That's going to be just these items on the left-hand side, PHP, THB, USD, etc. Okay, so then 
Um, here, let me run this. Uh, let me just run this code here in debug mode. So um, I noticed down to, to debug this, I did a print get currency string, which is this get currency string. So I'm going to do this for get currency. So I'm just going to type get currency. Uh, currencies. That's what that was, get currencies. Okay. And I put a breakpoint here so you can see what's going on. I'm going to run it. Oops, wrong one. Run it in debug. I should have created a launch JSON file. I didn't. I will. All right. So we have code in currency, code map. There's the code CAD. Currency string has a length of zero. Nothing's in it. Okay. So the first thing we do is we create a STR as a string for Canadian dollar. So that's the, the plain English way we would say it. But we want to add to the currency string the code with a little dash and that. So when I click here, now the first item in our currency string is CAD dash Canadian dollar. So that when I run the app, it's actually going to display all of these. And then we just kind of keep going through here as we keep adding them. So it's just looping through all of it. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to take those off and just click to the end. At the end, you'll have the full currency string, but only from this particular one. And then currencies, we type get currencies. So that's going to grab our currencies. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this. When we go to the app, currencies. So this is just a variable. I don't need the parentheses. And so it's going to model and it's grabbing this variable, which this variable calls. It, we get that variable by calling get currencies. All right. So then you might be going, okay, why are these other functions? What are they doing? Well, we want to get currency from code. And so what we're doing is we're just going to take the currency code map code. Currency from code and we got the get currency string. And we're actually just calling that function here and adding it to what you see here. Get currency string. All right. Um, so that I found was the easiest way to deal with the dictionary and get it there. Um, so I want you to go ahead and pause this video and go ahead and get this code in place. And then I'll let you come back. Okay, I assume you're done getting the code in place. You paused it and moved on. And I just created three variables. Currencies equals get currencies. Default from, we wanted to have a default value, so let's create a variable for it. And we're just going to get the currency string using USD. And then default two is get currency string euro. So we have this get currency string where you can just pass it a three-letter three, three letter code and then we'll get the full string using that, which is how I created the default values. So default value equals model dot default from default value equals model dot default to. So at this point, we have our app, we have all the code. Now you know how I put it all together. Okay, so I think what I'll do is I'll separate this out and in my next video tutorial, I'll cover making the API connection and I think I may or may not have time to actually do the calculation and show you how to do that in the final tutorial. Or it might be two more. We'll see. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more.